Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be talking about a um, revamped makeup brand that holds a very nostalgic place in my heart, and that is KVD Beauty, AKA what used to be Kat Von D Beauty, but is now KVD Beauty. Um, when Kat Von D left the brand, they obviously changed their name to KVD Vegan Beauty, which stands for, uh, what is it, uh, Cara Veritas Decora, which in Latin means value, truth, beauty. Back in the day, one of the reasons that this makeup brand in particular holds such a, like, a nostalgic place in my heart is because over 10 years ago, this is what got me into makeup as an artistry, as an art form, like, as an a way of self-care and like makeup in general it's like a ritual of self-care that's just for you and it makes you feel good and it makes you feel like yourself or like it's just a way of expressing yourself and it's just it's just for you and it's a, supposed to be a positive thing from my early 20s into my mid 20s i was doing a lot of stage makeup and the kat von d brand really pushed me out of my comfort zones it made me experiment on conventional ways it you know, like it really pushed that artistry side of what makeup was. It really was makeup for a makeup lover. Like it was makeup with a capital M, it was high impact. And that's what I needed for those projects. Questionable collabs aside and questionable um, names for shades and products aside, uh, something that I deem really important is that it provided a space, like a positive space for people who were in like alternative aesthetic, slash goth culture to really have a space, like a positive space in the mainstream makeup community. And there wasn't really another space for that other than like indie brands. So it was really part of the mainstream makeup community that people who weren't like doing like the regular glam looks had a space that was legit and supportive. Back when Instagram was a little bit more picture focused, they had a a uh, significant following of their artistry team, which was a group of women who did these really beautiful, like, goth looks and, like, showed you how to use the products to their full potential. And it was, it was a really cool short-lived time on the internet. And the artistry team kind of disbanded eventually. Kat Von D as a person, as the face of the brand, like started to be more questionable as the face of the brand, like saying and doing what she does. So like people who really enjoyed the brand, who usually were just like, yeah, we're not really into Kat Von D, but the makeup is so good. Um, the makeup started to be bad. The makeup started to be inconsistent. The formulas were very lackluster. The color stories didn't make any sense. There was just like not a lot to be said about the brand and it eventually like faded into the background for me with makeup brands like Too Faced and Tarte where I just went eh, like it, nothing they did interested me. Nothing in the faces of the brand weren't that great. You know, like it just, it just faded into the background. And so eventually Kat Von D left the brand and it became KVD Beauty. And the director of KVD Beauty was the Nikki Wolf. Now, if you are unfamiliar with Nikki Wolf, Nikki Wolf is also known as Nikki Makeup on Instagram. And she does such beautiful looks. Like she is an amazing makeup artist. I would trust her with anything that she has her little paws in, like anything that she has, you know, any say with product development. And so once I learned that, I, you know, I've been watching KVD with some interest. It's been a few years now that the, the change has happened. I finally bit the bullet and I bought some things that they have released. Um, and all of these were, you know, released within years of each other. And so, um, yeah, that's what I'm gonna be doing today is I'm revisiting a long lost love, the one that got away, if you will. You know, I also aged and so like my makeup preferences changed. And so I want different things from different products now. And so it's really cool to explore this brand that I used to love that has had this facelift, if you will. And um, I'm really excited to share my thoughts with you today. Okay, so I have nothing on my face for complexion. I just have, 
you know, just a little bit of skincare from this morning. Um, I went ahead and picked up the foundation brush. This is the, br the number 10 brush. And I've wanted this brush again in my collection for a while now. Um, I lost a makeup bag a long time ago and it had a lot of my Kate Kat Von D brushes in it. Um, but yeah, this is the new revamped KVD foundation brush and it's just as beautiful as I remember. It has like the tapered sides and it's very dense and it really can get into like every nook and cranny of your face. It's a fantastic brush. So if you've been watching me for any sort of length of time, you know that I'm not really much of a foundation wearer. I'm much more of like a spot conceal, like perfect the skin with like light layers. Um, but I, I just saw this and this went viral a couple of years ago, I think. And um, it has a lot of mixed reviews. It, it's, it's a very polarized product, but it's the Good Apple um, Skin Perfecting Foundation Balm. And there's supposed to be like apple extracts in it that are super nourishing to the skin. So there's a, like a shade match for almost everybody in this range. Um, so many people found like their perfect foundation shade in this and um, it's known for its like immense matte full coverage. Um, but yeah, I've been using this for the past like week and a half or so and I am really loving this. So I'm going to do this side of my face with the brush and then this side of my face with the sponge. And I have to say that I don't agree with it being super matte. Like I think that this is more of a natural skin finish more so than a matte finish. Um, if you have oily skin, this is going to work for you. And if you have dry skin, this is also going to work for you. It just depends on how you prep your skin beforehand with these kinds of like full coverage type of products. Um, and I found that on my chin area and underneath my nose, I had like a little bit of a cold and a little bit of a like skin breakout because of my time of the month. And so I was treating my skin like trying to clear up some acne. So it was a lot more dry and flaky than it normally is. And it did cling and get kind of cakey around those areas, but anything, even like my tried and true, like Kosas Revealer Concealer and all of that, like it would look like that if I was wearing those products. So I wasn't faulting this um, because by the end of the week when that dryness had finally exfoliated off of my face, um, it, it looked immaculate. So I would say, honestly, if you have more oily skin using a brush, is more for you. And then if you have more dry skin, using a sponge is more for you because they don't really affect the coverage of this surprisingly. Because normally using a sponge will give you less coverage and using a brush will give you more of a fuller, even coverage. But I found that they look almost identical. So that was me only using like one little swipe, dibby dab into the product. And I wear shade, um, Light 008. The reasons that I actually picked up this product was because of the shade and it was a fair, it was like, I think it's described as fair light with olive undertones and I almost never see that. Like I never see like fair with olive. It's usually like light medium with olive undertones. Um, and so I was like, I have to try it now. I have to, I have to know what this is like. I have to know like whether this would be a good shade match for me. And as you see, like pretty impeccable. Like it just looks like this side of my face, but more perfected. Go oh, into the right side of my face with this little sponge here. And I'm just doing like tiny little dabs. Like you do not need a lot of product at all because this is such like a full coverage product. And as you see, like it just, it's like instant coverage. Something that's cool with this foundation um, is that the coverage, like if you add areas where you want a little bit more coverage on with your finger, it also acts like a concealer, I've noticed. And it builds on top of itself in a really beautiful way. Like it doesn't get incredibly cakey or um, like when, you know, when you can see like the different coverages of layers 
if that makes sense. Like it doesn't do that. It just like melts together and then provides more coverage. I'm actually going to show you how much coverage this actually has with like blemishes. Cause I did, I did wake up with like a spot on my neck. Um, so I'm just going to like put that there and you see how it just kind of muted that in such a quick way without adding any sort of like discoloration and just adding a little bit more onto my chin here now that that dryness is gone. I'm going to zoom you in so you can see this is with the brush, this is with the sponge, virtually the same amount of coverage. But now that I have everything on, I'm just gonna even it out all with the sponge. But yeah, fair olive undertones, I would say, if you have similar skin to me where you're fair, but it's not like pinky or anything like that, like you have like a lot of green to you, give the shade a go. Like it's almost, it's like the most perfect shade match for me for the winter months. So yeah, uh, 10 out of 10, good apple foundation, balm foundation. I 100% recommend. I do love this. Um, and yeah, I don't really know like people's stances on it now because I don't think that people are really talking about it anymore. Like it had its like little moment in the sun virally. I would say that this is a really good product. I'm quickly adding on some bronzer. I'm using my uh, NARS Cream Laguna bronzer in the shade Laguna One. Because, so if you've been doing your makeup for a long time and you've tried a lot of different types of makeup, you start to know like what you prefer formula-wise. So for me, bronzing and contour, I like a more fuller matte coverage, whether it be powder or cream. And so KVD does a kind of contour bronzing product um, that's a gel formula and it's like a doe foot applicator. And I just, I've seen people use it here and there and it's gotten like mixed reviews as well. Um, but for me, I already know that I am not going to like it. Like I am not much of a gel lover or like balmy kind of, you know, like that, like that type of texture for a contour. That's just like, I feel like that's just going to slip off my face in a couple of hours. And all the effort that I put into like making sure it was blended out and like, you know, chiseling my face or like warming up my face would just be gone. Um, and I just think that's just like such a waste of time when it comes to makeup. So, um, for me, I guess what I'm saying is like, I want a product that is going to give me impact in that department and a gel doesn't seem like it's going to give me impact. Okay, so that is done. That laid on top of the foundation beautifully. I have used bronzers that are powder and bronzers that are cream on top of this foundation and both work beautifully. I quickly run some Glossier Boy Brow through my brows here because we don't really have any brow products that I was interested in. It seemed like they were still on that like, I might be remembering this incorrectly, but um, they're, they're still like in that like pomade territory with all of that. And I just, I'm not really a pomade girly. So I like myself to have a little bit more of like a fluffy, thick brow or a laminated brow, but yeah. Nice and easy, Glossier. It's great. Okay, so moving on to blush. Um, I decided to grab this blush because I had seen a few people use it before like on like reels and stuff and been like oh that's a kind of pretty consistency given that it's a gel so I just explained my my thoughts on gel formulas um and this is the uh mod con liquid gel blush and it's in this like little squeezy applicator here um, and I got this in the shade Luminary 50. Now this was advertised as like a muted peach blush, but as you see, it's very vibrant. So this is a very 
weird product. And when I say weird, it's, it's not like it's like a strange formula, but it's just kind of like one of those things where I don't really feel like it has a place in the collection for KVD yet, because it still is very much so like a brand where it's like high impact type of products, even if they are leaning on the more like they're trying to get into that skincare healthy looking realm, you know, that's very trendy now, like skincare meets makeup is what is trending in the makeup world right now. They were very much so like makeup for makeup sake, like makeup lover. It is makeup capitalized, like full coverage, full beat, like full glam. So this type of product, as you see, like when it's in its little dibby dab like that, it looks really high impact, but when you kind of get like this, like this looks like it belongs to in a completely different brand. It's very glossy, it's very pretty on the skin. Like, look at that. And this does not dry down. Um, a little bit goes a really, really long way. Like, you do not, like, what I took was, like, probably too much for one cheek, but just not enough for both, if that makes sense. So this, like, and it just keeps, like, going. Like, I could spread this, like, down my arm. And so, like, it's very shiny. And it has no real base. Like, it seems like it's, like, this very translucent gel-like consistency, given the name. And it just gives you like this tinge. So this looks like it belongs to a makeup brand like Glossier or Tower 28 or something that really focuses on skin first, makeup second, you know? And KVD is still, you know, getting their bearings on like who they are, I feel. And this kind of shows that. Like this shows that like, okay, like we have powder blushes available, but we don't really push those, we push these. And on top of like a full coverage look, like what I have on right now, like it, it kind of disappears throughout the day. Like it doesn't really have the same impact as the brand's other products, if that makes sense. And it just doesn't really like, like I don't find myself wanting to use this in combination with the rest of the products that I bought because it doesn't feel like it fits in. When I would wear this on its own, it would just kind of dissipate throughout the day. Like when I would get home, everything else would still be intact and look lovely on my face, but this would be completely gone. Like there would be some dew, but like this would be completely gone. How I've been wearing the Mod Con blush is with a matte blush underneath it to provide a base so that it, one has kind of like a, a similar-esque color to hold on to and provide that luminescent kind of glowy gel lit within healthy skin look that I think that they're aiming for. Um, and every time I've done this, so I'm just taking the uh, Victoria Beckham blush in Playground and just doing like a light layer, like this isn't the star of the show by any means, but it's just giving me like a little bit of like foundation, if you will, like a foundation for your blush. It's something to hold on to so that it has a little bit more integrity throughout the day. And so when it fades, there's still something there. Um, and every time I've done this, I've gotten so many compliments, like your skin looks so good, that's so beautiful, what's on your skin? Um, and I think that's the goal of this product, but it's just missing the mark ever so slightly. I'm just taking about that much, and if you blend this out with a sponge, it's just gonna disappear. It's so liquidy that the sponge is just gonna suck it up. And so you can do this with either your fingers or a brush. I prefer a brush because I feel like it goes on a little bit more even, evenly, even. It just adds a very beautiful glow to my skin. And so when the color fades, the glow will kind of remain. And then that Victoria Beckham will be underneath it. So you can see exactly the effect that this is having like compared to like just my hand versus on top of the Victoria Beckham. 
And so every time I've worn it in this way, people are like, wow, your skin looks so good. Um, and when I've worn it by itself, like nobody's ever said anything. There, as you can see, very subtle. Like that skin lit within, lit from within look, if you will. Okay, so yeah, the ModCon, Mod, ModCon, I, it's like I can't say it, uh, ModCon blush. Is it a win? Not really. Is it a fail? Also not really. Um, I think I'm gonna get like a better, a better idea of this um, when I wear it with something that's a little more like glowy and lighter coverage. I think I, I think that's when I'm gonna like understand my relationship with this more. Um, but currently I'm not really reaching for it that much. Like it's not really sticking out. Okay, but something that has really uh, rocked my little world. Ooh, uh, these have been in and out of stock for a couple of years now. Like I've always wanted to try them, but like I couldn't figure out if they were a permanent product <laughs> because they would just like disappear. They wouldn't be on Sephora, they wouldn't be on the KVD website. Um, and then like nobody would be talking about them. Um, I think Amanda Z was really the only person that was really like consistently talking about these and also unsure herself like whether they were discontinued or not. But anyways, this is the KVD Dazzle Stick in the shade Surge. And oh my god, is this a delight. Wait till you see. It's a cream shadow stick. And the formula is what I wanted from KVD. And it, it is reminiscent of like the beautiful formulas of the past back when KVD was a little bit more of like a reputable brand. Um, and as you can see in this lighting, the lighting's a little harsh in here. And over here, you can kind of see it. It's like this champagne-y, beautiful, wet looking topper, one and done, whatever you want it to be. It's champagne-y with purple and gold and silver, very, very refined glitters dispersed throughout it and it's so wet looking it's so lovely it's it's such a lovely product um and i really like the packaging like it's nice the you know the design on the outside is is lovely and just how it allows you to apply this oh buddy let's zoom in Like, wow, <laughs> I, <laughs> I think these are so beautiful. And you know what's really dope about this formula? I have pretty hooded eyes. Most things crease on me. It's not a big deal if they do. Like, it's not like a write-off, like, oh, that's gonna crease on me and it's gonna look really bad. Like, everything creases on me. This doesn't really crease on me. Like, this will look the same until I wash my face. Like, that is just, it's so lovely. It doesn't really, it's not like a sticky wet formula, but it is very much so a cream. But it doesn't really dry down either. Like it's really interesting and it's really innovative. And I think that this is an amazing product. Um, and I highly, highly recommend these. And if this isn't really like a shade that you're interested in, they have several shades that are just really, really cool. Like they're just cool, it's a cool product. With the sale, there was like a deal, like if you spent over a certain amount of money, they sent you some stuff for free. So in that, I got a little um, tattoo liner and I haven't used this in a really long time. And would it be like, you know, the essence of the brand, like they're so known for their, you know, their liners. So um, wish me luck, I am about to give myself a wing. recommend is doing both of your eyes at the same time so you can really see like the direction of what your wing 
needs to go. Okay, that applied beautifully. I think those are pretty even. Not too shabby. <laughs> she still got it. Ooh. This one's a little longer, but you know, it's fine. It's fine. Okay, yeah, the tattoo liner, it still holds up. Like it's still just like the shaking it too. Like it gets really like precise. I'm kind of feeling this. Let me throw in some lip liner here. I'm just using the Tower 28 one liner in the shade Work of Art before I put on the next product, which I kind of bought on a whim. Like this is the um, Nourishing Vegan Butter Lipstick in the shade Womanhood. Um, so this is basically KVD's like revamped studded lipstick formula. So they had like huge array of colors for a very long time in their matte formula and also in kind of a cream formula. And you know, there's just like nothing really to say about this other than like, it's just a little bit creamier than their other lipsticks that I remember. Just a little bit creamier. The shade's fine. It's kind of like a caramely nude shade. That's actually kind of a lot. Kind of <laughs> it's good for fall. You know, like it's, it's not really like a memorable thing. They actually uh, revamped a lot of their old formulas when they redid their line. And uh, yeah, it's just, you know, it just is. Do I recommend it? Not really, like it's just. So they recently came out with a new mascara and this is a uh, KBD's tubing, full sleeve tubing mascara. And I just opened this, I've never used this before. I was going through another mini and so I was just waiting for this video to open this up, but this is their version of a tubing mascara. And hello, like, so look at this wand, like rubbery, strange. She's strange. Uh, let's just try it. Let me get, make sure everything is on here. Um, I haven't really seen anybody talk about this, so I have no idea what I'm getting into. Ugh. Um. I'm not really sure how I'm supposed to like hold the wand. It's feeling pretty wet and it's not sure how I feel. Um, I like a tubing mascara to have like almost more like a comb wand where this is, it just kind of looks like a club. Like it's not even like it's like the teeniest, tiniest little bristles. I can't even tell if they're natural or if it's like silicone. I'm not gonna even try and do it on my bottom eyelashes uh, because the wand is just so strange. Like it, it's not like our, it's not like a, an hourglass shape and it's not like a comb shape. It's not even like a natural bristle type shape. It's just, very odd. And like tubing mascaras and easy wash off formulas are definitely like more trendy now. So this is their take, I guess. But who designed this wand? Who did this? Who knows, like maybe once the formula ages like a week or so, the wand will make a little bit more sense for the formula. I don't know, like, I don't know, like, what kind of look, like, this is going to give me, or, like, it's designed to give me with this wand. I don't know. But the formula itself is kind of wet. And I'm lucky enough to have, like, pretty thick and long eyelashes, so, like, most mascaras just look fine on me. But I always keep in mind people who don't have a lot of eyelashes. Um... Strange. 
Okay, um, that mascara is weird, uh, but we'll see. And I'll see if it's a true tubing formula when I wash it off, and I will report back later in a later video. Um, but now I just want to spice things up a little bit because I haven't used a product like this in a really long time. It's like, it's just one of those things that like, I know if I bought it with my own money, it would be a waste of money and I would never reach for it. Um, but this is sent to me for free. So I just figured what the heck, why not? This is the Everlasting Liquid Lipstick. They have these in so many colors and this is their shade Witches, which is their jet black one. Um, Apparently, they revamped this formula to be softer, to be um, not as drying, um, but apparently it's still just as long-lasting and um, smudge-proof, budge-proof, like everything-proof. So um, I haven't worn a liquid lipstick in so long, especially a dry-down, like, budge-proof, let alone a black one. So, um... Let's see. Oh. Okay. Mmm. Mmm. Interesting. Put my lips together. It does separate quite a lot. And I know like a color like this is kind of hard to formulate to be automatically even. Um, it's drying down. So we're gonna see. I didn't have my lip brush or anything in front of me to kind of make like a seamless lip line. But if I was going to be making this look in like earnest, um, I would definitely have a concealer handy to clean up the outside of my lips here. But, um, it's getting more sticky and tacky as it dries down. It doesn't have the same, like, kind of vanilla paint smell that it used to. It kind of smells more like, um, like a mousse in a way. And as it's drying, I can really see where it's separating. Let me see if I can build it in those areas. Because it's definitely clinging to dry patches because I am... Uh, I am well past my liquid lipstick days. So make my teeth look kind of yellow? Not really. But it's like in my teeth. Okay, so for this color in particular, I'm not gonna say this for all of the colors because like if you have more of like a brownie nude or like a red or something like that, you might not have this issue because it's black, you know? Um, but... I would say that it is more comfortable than it was in the past. Like it's, I can like move my mouth without feeling it feeling like my lips are cement. Um, I feel like if this was in like a, a cool red shade, like, or like an oxblood shade, this would be really cool. Like a nice formula for like a long lasting lipstick. Um, that's not really my style anymore. Like I've definitely outgrown this. Um, so I do prefer this, the studded, the butter, the butter lipstick, the ever, the epic kiss nourishing vegan butter lipstick. I don't prefer this, um, but this is fun. Like this is, it's much, it's, I will say that it is very much improved. I did this for science. Let's do a test. Okay, so that's fine. I feel like a little bit longer and it will be completely transfer proof. Uh, 
that was a doozy to get off. Uh, I'm just gonna put a little bit of this. Bony. Bones has been grooming next to me, so if you hear any like weird slurping noises, that's him. That's much better. I. That's that's so much better. Okay, so that's it. Uh, those are my thoughts on the revamped KVD. So there are some wins with the Good Apple Foundation. I absolutely love this. It's an impeccable shade match for me. And the Dazzle Stick in Surge, absolutely incredible. Such beautiful products. The Mod Con blush, wherever it is, here it is. The Mod Con blush, I'm still deciphering on like how I feel about this. I feel like it has a place, but not necessarily with this look. Like, you know, it's not like diminishing the look or like taking away from like how good this look could be, but I feel like this, this, uh, it doesn't really have a place in the KVD aesthetic, if that makes sense. KVD tattoo liner is great. Um, it was really easy to make the wing with this. I, I'm so happy that this is still around. And the mascara, I don't know about that wand, girl. I don't know. I don't know about it. Um, but the packaging is actually pretty lovely. But uh, yeah, we'll just have to see how this ages and how it washes off, etc. You know the deal. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's my spiel on that. And um, pleasantly surprised. Found some some new favorites actually. And that's it for me. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.